Hi, I'm Jason Frank. This video is the short overview version that presents my thesis project that I completed in the fall of 2011 as part of the requirements for a master's in computer science degree at the University of Tennessee. For a much better explanation of the application that I built and its design, please see the longer overview video. In that video, I explained the methodology that I used, design goals and choices that needed to be made, challenges that I faced, and the implementation details. In this video, I'm simply going to scratch the surface just to show you briefly what was built and why. The application is called Image Recon. It is a web application that is backed by a database utilizing a model view controller architecture. And it was built for the image reconstruction research of Dr. Jens Greger, who's also at the University of Tennessee. I was responsible for building all aspects of the application from scratch, including researching which frameworks and tools to use, designing and building the database, finding and utilizing a model view controller architecture so that I would build a, an extensible foundation for follow-up developers. I utilized the Cake PHP framework to run on the university server. And on the client, I also use a model view controller architecture. And this allows me to better handle the user interaction while the application is there in their browser to think architecturally about it enabled, a, I felt, a, a better way to build a, a foundation. And finally, to bring all of it together into a, an intuitive user interface. In a nutshell, motivation for building the application was to transform Dr. Greger's workflow. The process that he was using was to hand edit text files for input. This of course caused a lot of opportunity for human error to enter the equation if he you know, entered a negative number when only positive number is accepted or, or things of those nature. So I wanted to take the human error out of the equation any, any chance I could get. He also utilized some tools that he sort of used in an ad hoc manner that were not really connected in a useful way to his workflow. So basically my job was to transform that into a user-friendly workflow. So briefly, let's give a quick demonstration of doing some of those workflow tasks with the application that I built. Here you see it running in a web browser. I'm running this in Chrome. And let us just do a quick demonstration of creating a new job from scratch. And we will also create what I call a job version, which is an attempt to reconstruct a set of input projections into a set of output slices. Again, for a much better explanation of what those things mean, see the longer overview video. So the application is scanning the file system to find a job group that has a job directory that, does not already, that has not already been added to the database. And it's finding this as a directory. We're going to do the one called test job one. So what has happened is, the user has copied the input projections into a directory or folder named test job one. So once they've done that, the preconditions have been met and we can proceed to add this to the database. Now test job one is the directory name and sometimes it needs to stay that way because when Dr. Greger receives a new job, say from Oak Ridge National Laboratory, it, it might follow their naming convention, but I provide other fields for metadata to provide uh, more recognizable names and metadata that he can use. Let's say that this job actually has input projections of my stapler here. and We want to see the inside of the stapler. So that's a reconstruction job. So I'm going to give this an alternate name of Jason's stapler. And I'll give a quick description. I'll say the chrome and black bad boy stapler on Jason's desk. We'll give it a few tags for easier categorization. We'll call this test and office equipment. 
Now that we've finished the metadata for the job, we will now add the first job version. And as I click this accordion tab, now we start to see where we're going to input the actual reconstruction parameters. So a challenge here was how do I present the user with a multitude of parameters in a fairly compact, user-friendly way without overwhelming them. So what I did was, in addition to these accordion mechanisms, I divided these parameters up into panels that are a bit like tabs you see across the bottom here. And when we click on them, you'll see an animation effect. So rather than just clicking the tab and instantly having the panel switch, I like using this sliding effect as a visual representation that these parameters are related, that in a way they are next to each other. So let's enter in a few details here. We'll say we're going to use mostly the defaults with a little less Roy Z. That's one of the parameters. I'll take credit for this one. The comments area is a nice note-taking feature. So before the job has been processed, I can uh, make some mental notes about what I think is going to work, or afterwards I can come back and add notes about how well it did or did not work. And I'm just going to say my gut feeling tells me to use less Z. Now as we move over to the type panel, we start to get into factors related to the model view controller on the client here. Two things about that. First of all, the state of the GUI right here. The state, the default state as you can see is there's no, there's no job type chosen and it's an empty area. As I select one though, you'll see a panel revealed. So one factor that I had to deal with was if the job does not validate, in other words, they send it to the server, server checks the model for the validation rules. If something doesn't pass, we need to ship this form back to the client. And I felt that things like this should be recreated for them. The user shouldn't have to start over in selecting those things. So I, I start to deal with passing state information back from my server and getting it rendered here on the client. The other issue with model view and controller being on the client here in, in this regard is that you see these, these panels are stored there in a model on the client ready to be revealed. There's no uh, extra call back to the server that needs to be made. So I'll leave most of these at default, but let's intentionally make a couple of errors to quickly illustrate How the validation might work. When I'm all done, I can click to check that I'm ready to submit the job to a CUDA cluster that is also at the University of Tennessee, which is a, a way to parallel process the images for faster performance. So I'm now going to submit the job. So what has happened is it's gone over to the server, gone to the model on the server, checked the validation rules, and we see that it did not validate. So another challenge was now that I've wrapped up the user interface and these accordions and these tab structures, how do I quickly show the user where the mistakes were made so they can correct them? So what I did was implement a breadcrumb strategy. So here you see of the two panels, the job version has the red X, so it must be there. And then across the bottom we see two areas that a mistake was made. We'll click quickly correct those mistakes and we'll resubmit. So the server has gone through a number of things that it has needed to do. It's saved to the database using a transaction because it has to save outward to all of those tables. Configuration file for Dr. Greger's C code to be able to read. It's a text file that, that his code knows. The CUDA uh, cluster needs a control script and there's certain output directories that need to be made. And, it, and then we parse out the CUDA job number and store it as well. Now we're presented with a new view that represents the job with its metadata as well as its job versions. So now we would start to get to the iterative part 
of the process where we're going to continue to make job versions until we have the desired outcome. As I hover now over the job version, I see options for that version. And the handy one is to use a previous job version as sort of a template for the next one. Usually, you know, maybe you're close. Maybe you've, you've almost honed in on what you want. And so you want to start with those values, which we will now do. So now you see that the job itself is held constant and we're just adding a new job version for it. As I show the details, you see the other metadata just to confirm that that's the job we thought it was. I'll make a note, my gut feeling was wrong. Again, you see the state that was immediately set up because I used a template from the other job version. And we will submit that as well. So now we have two job versions. At this point, let me illustrate two other open source tools that I found ways to utilize in this application. First one would be, as we go to add the third one, now if I want to look at the input projections that are going to be used for this job version, I've got this launch Fiji button here and it's available from any context while in the job version. And what this is going to do is utilize a program called ImageJ or Fiji to give you a way to, to do some image manipulation on those projections. And this is a nice sort of previewing mechanism. What I did was when I launch, when I press the launch Fiji button, I have an Ajax call that goes back to the server, does some pre-processing on the images using Fiji as a, a headless job application. So what I do is I take those images, I downsample them, I put them into a stack, which is kind of like putting them as a single unit, then I compress them before finally shipping them over to the client. Once it arrives here in the browser, I then use Fiji as a Java applet so that you can use it graphically uh, to manipulate these images. So as I click the button, I disable the user interface while the Ajax call is processing so that the user does not continually click over and over again to create new images. You can see I have messages that fade up that explain that three stacks were made. I'll pull down, here's image J that pulls up. You can see it's a graphical applet application. And there's three stacks that are made. I explain why there's three stacks in the longer video. And briefly I will show something you might do with it. Let's adjust this one. And there you see the brightness contrast was adjusted and because it's an image stack that single adjustment propagates to all images in the stack. Now I'll finally illustrate the other main open source tool that I utilized in this application. It's a file explorer and what this is going to give me is a look at files and directories that are on the server right through my browser right here. It also utilizes Ajax to provide that view of what's back there on the server without ever leaving my browser experience here. So this home area right here is a special directory that I've set up that allows you to look from there downward at the file system. Oftentimes in these image reconstruction jobs, you really want to get your hands on the file system, make sure that the files that the web app was supposed to create were created, and maybe do some quick ad hoc things that the application doesn't do programmatically. So, quick example. What are some of the things we could do? Let's look at test images here. Let's display it in this manner. We could do things like preview it. This is quick preview and it's resizable, it's draggable. This utilizes the jQuery UI framework. And I was using jQuery anyway, so I felt it would be a, a good addition without uh, bringing in any other heavyweight JavaScript framework. 
Other things you can do are things like drag and drop. You can actually do keyboard short shortcuts like Control C and Control V into there. Here you see it was added. So a lot of the normal things that you could do on your native operating system file explorers you can do uh, with this Ajax app. So again, when I drag and put it into the subdirectory, that's like me going actually to campus right now to the server and going onto that machine and actually doing this. So some other handy things you can do with it. I can make a new text file. Once I've made it, I can edit it. So this would be, be like me going to the command line on the server, firing up my favorite text editor and creating this file. In the typical workflow, how you might use this, if I look here at job groups, the, here's the job directory that we've been working with, and I can verify job-1, job-2, job-3. These correspond to the first three job versions that we've been making. I could go here and check the configuration file that was generated by the app for Dr. Gregor's code. And I can make sure that it looks like it's supposed to. You can see here these proj data previews. These are the three stacks that I created just a minute ago when I made the when I brought the image stacks over to view with the Fiji application. So this is a very nice utility tool to provide several capabilities. I also have a help mechanism which features videos or screencasts that will help with follow-up developers as well as users of the application. So in summary, I've strived to build an extensible architecture for an application that a follow-up developer can come along and build the next version while giving the user an intuitive user interface. Hope you enjoyed, thanks for watching. I'm Jason Frank.